before I hand it over to our special speaker, I do, I want everybody to think about this week, I want you to think about forgiveness, okay? And forgiving, forgiving those who wronged you. And I'm talking to myself right now, right? I need to forgive and move on. Y'all do the same. Special speaker, Tanya Flynn. All right. Well, the first thing we have is a competition that involves running. So I will need two of you who like to run. Mr. Corey, can you set up a course for us? Thank you so much. Carson, I heard you were an amazing runner, and your parents will never pick you for anything, so I will. Come on. I see you. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up a course. Corey, can you... Explain the course to us so that we know the exact cone. path. You touch that cone. Touch that cone. Touch that cone. Touch that cone. Come back here and touch this cone. Then touch this cone. Oh, wow. <laughs> Good luck with that, girls. That'll be fun. All right, so before... See, I like a real competition, though. Like, I never really liked running. Still to this day, I don't like running. But if there's a competition to it, then I'm all about it. So let's add something kind of crazy to this. Well, yes, a hard hat, just in case Carson falls. Because at his speed, it's likely, you know, uh, Carson is so, so fast. So um, how about, yeah, yeah, I think that, I think you're super strong, so you can handle this. All right, let's. Come over this way. Let me show you what I got for you. Not you. Oh. Not ever you, like your dad says. All right. So right here, I have this wonderful vest. It's really neat. It's going to give you a good look of speed and agility and... Heavy. Really heavy. <laughs> wow. Okay, so that probably weighs about a quarter of... Okay. Yeah. How's that feel? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you feel light on your feet? Okay. So I even have something extra for you. Because I have, I have a faith in you. I have a lot of belief in you that you can... Whoa. Oh, wow. Well, that's why I didn't pick Mr. Corey. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see what we got here. This is going to make your legs stronger. Oh, look at how... That looks so good on you. You are looking super tough and, and, and fast. <laughs> Another one? Yes, look at this. Okay, we have another one for you. Ready? Same leg or other leg? <laughs> Let's try the other leg. So right now with all this weight, you're probably even with Carson. Okay, I'm just saying. I'm trying to make it even. I don't want you to just blow him out of the water, okay? I mean, you look like the roadrunner, and he's like the coyote, so. <laughs> okay, so now we have the legs. We have the chest. Mm. I still think this is going to be an uneven race. Yes. Oh! Okay, so now this is even. This is even. So I need you to prove it. <laughs> so now you will possibly be at the same exact speed as Carson. It's just going to take you grunting through it and getting it done, okay? Do you believe you can do it? You got this. All right. So remember, first cone right here. Then you touch that cone. Come back through here. Touch that cone. Come around. There's the fourth cone. All right. Y'all ready for this challenge? You're up for this challenge, right? You raise your hand. You ready to do this? You said you're fast. It's going to be a close race. Carson, just do the best you can, honey, okay? All right. So, so remember, you got to pump your arms. You got to really go for it, okay? All right. On the count of three. One, two, three. Let's go. Come on. Run, 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 go, 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 go. Come on, let's go, let's go. Come on, you can do this. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right. Set, come on, set that bucket down. There you go, touch it. Oh, yes. See, look, follow the rules. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes. Oh, she's closing in on you, Carson. She's closing in on you. Oh. Oh, wow. This is, well, you might have a chance. Yeah. 
<laughs> he touched it. Oh. All right, we'll come back up. So did you think you'd have to do a full-on workout today? <laughs> Look at her. You want to finish it out? <laughs> Good job. All right. Good job. Let's get this off of you. All right, so after watching this race, <laughs> after watching this race, that was pretty fair, right? What are you say what are you saying? That wasn't fair? Well, I can kind of I can kind of say, well, you know, Carson's uh, an average runner. No, I'm pretty speed. Okay. Yeah. From what I saw. <laughs> but I was trying to even it out, and you don't think I made it even? It wasn't fair, it wasn't a fair race. All right, well, thank y'all so much. All right, so you, you feel like that wasn't a fair. Are you sure it wasn't fair? It was fair. Like, I was just trying to make you stronger, okay? Because, like, I didn't want Carson to feel really bad about himself, and you lap him or something, like do three laps on him or whatever. So um, you had to carry those buckets. You had the weight on you, on your, on your shoulders and everything, and you had the weight carrying down your feet. So we're talking about DIY, forgiveness is up to you. So... Watching you run that race kind of makes me think about forgiveness or rather unforgiveness. So this month we'll be talking about forgiveness. Um, and watching you, like I said, with all that weight on you makes me think about unforgiveness. When you have something that you need to forgive, it's like a weight if you hold on to it. Instead of offering forgiveness, you carry it around with you. And so, you know, if you didn't have that on you, do you think you could have won? You think you could have ran your best race? Okay, so again, if we think about it in terms of unforgiveness, it weighs you down and it doesn't allow you to run your best race. Without that weight, there was a chance you could have won. But with that weight, there really wasn't a whole lot of, of, uh, of a chance for you to win, right? So it's the same way with unforgiveness. We're carrying around and it's not allowing us to live our best life. And that's what we're going to be talking about how unforg unforgiveness weighs us down, how it holds us back, and how we just cannot live our best life when we're holding on to unforgiveness. So many of us in the room have had something that hurts us. Raise your hand. How many of us have actually been hurt by somebody, a family, a friend, someone in this room, your sibling, whoever it is? Every single one of us has had hurt. Unforgiveness follows hurt. Remember that. So, but it's a choice. You have the choice to either hold on to that or you can allow forgiveness to follow a hurt. So let's always remember that one right there. Um, so we've all been hurt by different people, even strangers. Like someone can just say a rude thing to you in the hallway that you don't even know. Someone can say a rude thing to you in the store that you don't even know and it kind of hurts your feelings, right? And you have, you get angry and then you have this unforgiveness in you instead of saying, you know what? I know that you're having a bad day. I'm just going to forgive what you just said. So those are the things that we can look at and knowing that we have a choice to either hold on to unforgiveness or to choose forgiveness. So... That is a tough question, though. Like, how do, we, how do we know that that's what we're supposed to do? How do we know that we're supposed to forgive? Because that doesn't feel natural, does it? Like, when you get angry and someone hurts you, does that feel natural just to go, oh, okay, it's okay, you know, you hurt my feelings, but I'm going to forgive you. Does that feel natural? Or is that something that we do? Because maybe that's what God wants us to do right? It's not always easy either. So we're going to look in the book of Matthew. That's going to be where we're going today. So if you have your Bible, let's open it up to the book of Matthew. So in this today that we're talking about, Jesus had really close friends. Do you know what they were called? Who was? Go ahead, Tyler. Disciples. That's right. So Jesus had a lot of these people that followed him, and they were his friends, and they were called the disciples. And one of those disciples was named Peter. Does anybody know who Peter? Does anybody know what Peter did for a living? What was he? A fisherman. That's right. So if you've ever read a lot about Peter and, and understood who he was and his relationship with God, you'll also understand he asked a lot of questions. Um, 
he was there a lot. Um, he was one that would just say things. And sometimes he got it right, and sometimes he got it really not right. Right? Right. Okay, so we're going to look at Matthew 18.22, because this is going to be where we learn, we get the first glimpse of um, true forgiveness. And so when you think back to the times that you've been hurt, you may have even been hurt by the same person multiple times. Like you forgave them for something, and they've hurt you again in the same way. So Peter asked a question, and this question had actually been asked of rabbis. And rabbis were the people that you went to for this kind of guidance. You could go and ask questions and get answers. And so back then, the answer of how many times do I forgive, the number was three. You offer forgiveness three times. And so I don't know if Peter was um, just trying to test Jesus and see what his thoughts were on this because maybe he was leaning more into what Jesus says and believed more of him than what the rabbis would offer. But in this in this uh, passage, he will ask a question. Let's see. We are on eighteen twenty one. Would anybody like to read this for us, Tyler? Seven times. Okay, so that's, that's a pretty generous amount considering the three that the rabbis talked about, right? So you offer forgiveness three times is what they said. And so Peter's asking this question. I think he's trying to up the ante here. How about seven times? Should we forgive seven times? So the answer that Jesus gives is kind of unexpected. Um, but let's see what he says here. Clearly, let's see, he was being... All right, so Matthew 18, 22, and this is the response that came from Jesus. Yes, ma'am, Gabby? In this answer, I tell you not seven times, but 77 times. Whoa, wow, 77 times. <laughs> the rabbis are saying three. Peter was just saying, hey, let's be generous and do seven, and Jesus offers 77 times. I feel like in my life that I've probably had to be given, forgiven for something 77 times. I mean, honestly, I've made lots of mistakes. I've done lots of things. I've hurt people's feelings, sometimes intentionally, sometimes unintentionally. I believe that I have been forgiven by something at least 77 times by our Father. Okay? So the things that I've done against the Father, I have been forgiven of. <clears throat> So I need, I've got, here's a parable that'll come up. At this point, Jesus will bring up a parable. He tells it, and it's a story. And that lets you see in a visual way what he's talking about when he's saying forgiveness being offered. So I need three of you up here. Can I get three volunteers? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Anybody else? Carson. Come on. All right, so... I'll have you stand in the middle, ask when you stand on the other end, and you're going to stand over here. And let's see. Let's get this out of the way. All right, Carson, you're going to be over here. And in this parable, there's a king. Who do you think should be the king? Carson. Carson. All right, let's make Carson the king. Carson, put that on right there. All right, so let me find my place here. All right, so we have three of them up here because um, we don't... And so the king, of course, was the king, and he had lots of riches, right? But I don't have tons of gold. I'm so sorry, Carson. It's okay. I don't have bags of gold, but what do I have? What do I have? What do I have? All right, so... Oh, well, in my eyes, this is just like a bag of gold. <laughs> Donuts. This is my cheat day thing right here. Uh, it's still donuts. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty much not <laughs> picky when it comes to donuts. All right, here is the gold that the king has. All right, we have two servants over here. So, um, so those donuts are going to represent a small portion of the king's wealth. Let's look at what Jesus told Peter. It's 1823. Who would like to read that for us? Tyler? All right. Is there? 
All right, so imagine the king had loaned one of his servants 10,000 bags of gold or a box of donuts. So first servant, please join the king's side, and he will present you with a loan of 10,000 bags of gold, a.k.a. the donuts. So pass it off. So the king has given... Given the first servant 10,000 bags of gold, so that's a big amount, right? That's a huge amount for me, the whole box of donuts, okay? Not just one, not a bite, not a donut hole, the whole box of donuts. That's pretty awesome. So in our story, the servant spent the money on whatever he needed. He needed this money. He borrowed it from the king. He's obviously trying to maybe build up his business. He's buying sheep. He might be buying lambs, maybe a little bit of pottery that once he um, gets the meat, and once he gets eggs from the chickens, whatever it is, he needs his pottery to serve it on, right? So he has now spent this money that he was loaned. Jesus explained that the man was unable to pay back everything when the king attempted to collect the debt. You're going to try to collect this debt. So the money was spent, and during this time, there were serious consequences for those who could not pay back what was borrowed. What do you think some of those consequences would be? Oh, wow. You just went straight to death. Wow. Not even a slap on the hand yet or like a warning or nothing. Just you're going to die. Jail. Okay, jail sounds like a good one. Um, Sometimes they were imprisoned until the debt could be paid off. Sometimes the entire family was put into slavery. So whatever that amount was is what the family had to work off. And so 10,000 bags of gold, that would be a long time to pay off, right? You'd have to do a whole lot of work to pay that off. So just knowing that you owe that much to the king and now you've spent it and you don't have it, Let's see what happens. So the servant was upset because he knew the consequences. In fact, the servant was so panicked that he fell to his knees. So check this out on 1826 27. Who wants to read this first for me? All right, Gabby. Give me 10 pieces. I'll pay everything back. All right, I'll pay everything back. So um, is there more to it? Let's see. Go to 27. Oh, oh, you're such a kind king. All right, so you're done begging, and your debt has been forgiven. I mean, that was, a, that was super nice of the king. And what this was is, the nice king. yeah, the servant owed this amount. But instead of going, well, I'm not giving you that money. I don't have it. You can do whatever you got to do, blah, blah, blah. Beg for forgiveness. And the king, being nice, offered that forgiveness to the servant. So you know what you get to do? You get to open that box of donuts. And enjoy one. Because you got to keep the spoils. All right, so it's yours. He forgave you of that debt. So now, let's see what happens. You would think that servant would be just humbled and just kind and happy that that debt was forgiven. So let's see. In the parable, Jesus was telling the king showed mercy, canceled debt, and then sent the servant on his way. Wow, that was great. So... I know, a very nice king. So as soon as the servant was free to leave the king, he marched up to another servant. So take your donuts and march up to that servant. This servant, the second servant, owes the first servant money. So knowing what the first servant just went through as far as like getting the debt, you know, just gone, just forgiven. Your debt was forgiven and he's going now and try, she's going now and trying to get the debt that's owed to her from the second servant. And this debt was much smaller. What was the first debt to the king? What did you owe? 10000 Okay. So let's, um, wow, mm, that's a big difference. Let's look at 1828. Who would like to read this for me? All right, Carson. He grabbed him and started choking him. Haley. (laughs) But uh, what was that amount owed? So she owes you a few dollars. How much did you owe the king? And the king uh, forgave your debt? And you're going to choke out this person for a few dollars when you've kept 10,000 bags of gold. Okay, so... Um, the first servant was loaned 10,000 bags of gold or a dozen donuts. Equal to me in my eyes. This huge debt was forgiven and the servant then in turn lent money to another servant. It was not a dozen donuts. 
was like one, like a donut hole or something, right? Like not much. So not even close to a dozen donuts. After the original servant had been, had his debt erased, he marched up to the other servant who borrowed the donut hole, like a hundred silver coins, nothing like 10,000 gold pieces. And, um, he just forcefully demanded the debt to be paid. I mean, you choked, choked her out. You're like trying to get your few dollars back when you've been, <laughs> when you've been given 10000 right? So the first servant did not forgive the debt. Instead, he threw the second servant in prison. Take her and put her in prison. No, I mean, there's still a debt owed. Like you can sue somebody if they owe you money. That this works the same way as a hundred... Well, she owes her money, yeah. So it's just like today's time. If, if somebody owes you money and they don't give it to you, you can take them to court. It's the same thing. So others witnessed this and rushed to the king and told him everything they had seen, which greatly upset the king. The king called the first servant to stand before him one more time. All right, Haley. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> So you're in front of the king, and the king said, we have Matthew 32 through 33, Gabby. Then the master called the first servant in, the evil servant, and said, for I gave all that you owe to me because you begged me to. All right, what's the next one? Shouldn't you have had mercy on the other servant as I have had for you? Think about that for just a second. That's, that's a pretty big thing. This king was owed. It was a lot more, right? It was owed a lot more, and he forgave. And now standing before him is that same servant who was owed just a few dollars, like a donut hole. And the king is upset. So... The king was disappointed. He handed the first servant over to the jailers. So take her to jail. <laughs> you can go in there and sit with the one you choked out. <laughs> so he was taken over to the jailers until he paid back all the money or the dozen donuts. So you now have to work out that 10,000 bags of gold because of your inability to forgive someone who owed you for a few. Let's give our people a round of applause here for helping me. With this parable, all right, let me... It was hard acting mad at someone who's taller than me. <laughs> yes, it was. All right, so this was a powerful story, and um, it all started when Peter asked, how many times should we forgive someone? And instead of giving him a simple answer, Jesus told this story. And as you can see in this story, what do you feel God is trying to tell us? What's the main point what God is trying to tell us in the story, Gabby? Right, so um, God desires us to forgive all. Jesus desires us to forgive as much as his death on the cross was to forgive us. Does that make sense? So God is much like the king in the story who forgave a really big debt. When he sent Jesus to give his life on the cross for our sins, it gave us all a path to be forgiven by God. So that was a debt that Jesus didn't even have. That wasn't one for him to pay. It wasn't his debt. It was ours. And he went to the cross and paid our debt. So he forgave for you. It was his payment that forgave you. So always remember that too. Um, Regardless of how bad we've messed up, our response to God's forgiveness shouldn't be by holding on grudges when someone calls you a mean name. It shouldn't be by getting really angry towards someone who embarrassed you. Rather, we should follow God's example to forgive others. So nobody's saying that's easy. Like how, how many of y'all actually still have something you haven't forgiven somebody for doing? Like you know they stole something from you, they lost something of yours, they called you names, or they embarrassed you, they made fun of you, and you're still holding on to that unforgiveness. And so just like in the race, that weighs you down. It doesn't allow you to live your best life. It's still there. And so I'm just going to challenge you to forgive that person. Forgive whatever that was. And see what happens. Sometimes in a relationship, even with a friend, you can still be friends with them, but you're still holding on to that unforgiveness. And maybe that friendship can't go to the next level. Maybe you can't have great conversations because you just have this little grudge against them and you're still holding on to that. It's not always easy 
Forgiveness sometimes can be really, really hard. Sometimes it may take you two or three or four times. Because I can tell you, if you offer forgiveness, you say you've offered it, but then you still hold it deep down inside against that person. That's not real forgiveness. You know, Jesus went to the cross and he died for us. And that was our forgiveness. And he never takes it back. That is permanent. That is forever, no matter what we do. So forgiving others doesn't mean that all your problems will be gone or fixed or that these relationships will be healed. But you can let go of how you feel about a person and not carry that grudge around anymore. Offering forgiveness allows you to move on. So without those buckets, without that vest, do you think she could have won the race? Yeah, I got my money on her. Sorry, Carson. Love you. Yeah, she, she could have won that race. But it was only because of the unforgiveness that was weighing her down and holding her down and planting her feet almost to the ground. Like, it, it literally will stick you. And it will hold you in the unforgiveness. And you'll just kind of sit and, and boil in it. So one of the things that I also wanted to tell you all here is, if you've not forgiven, then how can you ask for forgiveness? That's a challenging question right there. So you are holding on to unforgiveness of someone else but then you do something and you ask for forgiveness and you expect it to be given to you, how can you do that if you haven't offered forgiveness? All right, so that is what we will be talking about a little bit more when we go into a small group. Um, why is it important to let go of grudges? This is what we're thinking about. So why does forgiveness matter? Why is it important to let go of grudges you're holding against? Knowing the answer to this question will help you make wise choices when it comes to how to treat other people in your life. So y'all are going to go and talk about this in small group. And our biggest question is, why does forgiveness matter? We're about to move in our time of worship. Um, in our time of worship, I want y'all to be thinking about that question, though. Like, why is it important to forgive? Is Miss Jalissa doing our worship? Whoop, whoop. All right, so that's our question. We'll have worship, and then we'll move to small group, and we'll dive more into why is it important to forgive. Mm -hmm. 